SpaceX just humiliated NASA. Starship 36 rolled out with heat shield technology that makes Dream Chaser look like a joke. 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what Starship handles while Dream Chaser struggles with basic missions. But here's what's really crazy. While NASA engineers spend days applying messy silicone, SpaceX folds ceramic felt in minutes. The shocking truth? Starship can lose tiles and keep flying. Dream Chaser? One missing tile could end the mission. How did SpaceX create a system so advanced it makes a $2 billion spacecraft obsolete? Let's dive right in. The Discovery That Shocked Everyone June 15th, everything changed. When Starship 36 rolled out at SpaceX's Massey test site, engineers across the world dropped their phones. Their jaws hit the floor. Why? Because this wasn't just another test vehicle. This was perfection. Every previous Starship had looked like Swiss cheese. S-33, missing tiles at the top. S-34, gaps everywhere on the bottom. They looked unfinished, incomplete. But S-36, every single tile in place. This wasn't testing anymore. This was SpaceX saying, we're ready for Mars. But what they found between those tiles, nobody saw this come. The problem that kills spacecraft, 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what hits your spacecraft during re-entry. Hot enough to melt copper in seconds. Hot enough to turn steel into liquid. And here's the terrifying part. It's not the big tiles that kill you. It's the tiny gaps between them. Those gaps are death traps. Sup superheated plasma gases squeeze through like liquid fire. One unsealed gap, your billion-dollar spacecraft becomes a shooting star. For decades, everyone used the same solution, RTV silicone. NASA uses it, Boeing uses it, even SpaceX used it, until now. But here's what nobody talks about. RTV silicone is a nightmare. You mix base compound with curing agent. Perfect 1-5% ratio. One drop too much, start over. Then you wait, and wait, and wait. Days, sometimes weeks. Temperature has to be perfect. Humidity has to be perfect. One mistake during curing, the silicone fails when you need it most. During re-entry, at 2,500 degrees, when failure means death, SpaceX engineers stared at this process and asked one simple question. What if we could fix this in minutes, not days? The breakthrough nobody expected white felt. That's SpaceX's secret weapon. Sounds ridiculous, right? Like something from a craft store? It's not. These aren't regular felt pieces. They're precision-engineered ceramic fibers cut into perfect hexagons that fit between tiles like a jigsaw puzzle designed by geniuses. Watch how they install it, no mixing chemicals, no waiting for curing, no complex equipment, just fold, tuck, done. An engineer grabs a piece of felt, folds it with their hands, slides it between two tiles, and walks away. The entire process takes 30 seconds. But here's the question everyone's asking. Can felt really survive what kills other materials? The temperature showdown, this is where it gets brutal for NASA. SpaceX's ceramic felt handles 1,200 to 1,400 degrees Celsius, that's 2,500 plus degrees Fahrenheit. Whenever this case NASA's RTV silicone, 205 degrees Celsius. Do the math. SpaceX's felt survives seven times hotter temperatures than NASA's best solution. But it gets worse for the competition when Starship flexes during re-entry, and it will flex under those extreme forces the felt moves with it. Like a cushion absorbing the stress. RTV silicone, it cracks, it fails, it kills missions. The maintenance disaster. Here's where Dream Chaser gets humiliated. When RTV fails on Dream Chaser, the nightmare begins. Technicians scrape off old silicone with specialized tools, clean the surface with solvents, mix new compounds in sterile environments, apply with precision equipment, then wait. Days or weeks for proper curing. All while the spacecraft sits grounded. SpaceX's approach? Grab the old felt, throw it away. Grab new felt, fold it in. Launch tomorrow. Dream Chaser's maintenance windows? Weeks. Starship's maintenance windows? Hours. 
This isn't just better, this is revolutionary. While NASA counts downtime in months, SpaceX will count it in minutes. But why didn't the world's smartest aerospace engineers think of this first? The steel secret that changes everything. Here's what makes Starship absolutely unstoppable. Dream Chaser, built on aluminum frame. Space Shuttle, aluminum frame. Aluminum melts at 660 degrees Celsius. SpaceX chose 304L stainless steel. Melting point, 1,400 degrees Celsius. This means something incredible. Starship can lose heat shield tiles and keep flying. The steel itself becomes a backup heat shield. Dream Chaser loses critical tiles. Mission over, land immediately. Starship loses tiles. The steel takes the heat. Mission continues. Remember Space Shuttle Columbia. One damaged tile caused catastrophic failure because aluminum couldn't handle the heat. Starship's steel frame makes Columbia-type disasters impossible. The numbers that prove domination. 18,000 tiles protect Starship's belly. Dream Chaser needs only 2,000 tiles. Sounds like Dream Chaser wins, right? Dead wrong. SpaceX's tiles attach mechanically. Clips and fasteners. Any tile replaceable in minutes. Dream Chaser's tiles. Bonded permanently with adhesives. Damage one tile, you might rebuild entire sections. Here's the comparison that matters. Starship tile replacement, five minutes. Dream Chaser tile replacement, five days. But the real shock comes when you see what these heat shields were actually designed for. The Mars Revelation Dream Chaser was built for Earth orbit. Maximum re-entry speed, 17,000 sure 37. Maximum temperature that Starship was built for Mars. Coming back from Mars means hitting Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 plus miles per hour. Temperatures that would vaporize Dream Chaser instantly. This isn't about better technology. This is about different leagues entirely. Dream Chaser plays in the minor leagues of low Earth orbit. Starship? It's built for the interplanetary championships. While NASA celebrates reaching the space station, SpaceX is preparing for Mars colonies. The active cooling ace, but SpaceX has one more devastating advantage. For the most extreme Mars return missions, when even steel and ceramic felt aren't enough, Starship has active cooling. Liquid methane flows across the spacecraft's skin, creates a protective barrier that drops surface temperatures by hundreds of degrees. Dream Chaser's backup plan? There isn't one. No active cooling, no backup systems, no plan B. Just hope and prayer that nothing goes wrong. The production domination. Here's where the competition becomes embarrassing. SpaceX makes their tiles in-house. Complete control over quality, timing, cost, and supply. Dream Chaser, they beg external suppliers. SpaceX needs 1,000 replacement tiles. They manufacture them overnight. Dream Chaser needs tiles. They join the waiting list behind everyone else. Supply chain delays, quality control nightmares, cost overruns, while SpaceX builds, NASA waits. The brutal reality check. This battle is already over. SpaceX didn't just build a better heat shield, they built a completely different class of spacecraft. Dream Chaser, 30 feet long, carries a few thousand pounds to orbit. Starship, 400 feet tall, carries 100 times more cargo. Comma, Dream Chaser, designed for a few flights per year, Starship designed for multiple flights per day. Dream Chaser, built for Earth missions. Starship, built for Mars colonies, a quote-unquote. While everyone else perfects yesterday's technology, SpaceX is building tomorrow's reality. The future is already here. Every fold of white felt on Starship 36 represents something bigger. This isn't just about gap fillers or heat shields or maintenance schedules. This is about making humanity a multiplanetary species. Every mechanically attached tile, every degree of temperature resistance, every minute saved on maintenance, it's all designed for one ultimate goal, Mars. Not visits to Mars, not flags and footprints on Mars, cities on Mars, permanent human settlement on Mars. While Dream Chaser represents the absolute pinnacle of what we could do yesterday, Starship represents what we're actually going to do tomorrow. The question isn't whether SpaceX's approach is better, the question is whether anyone else can catch up. 
And based on what we've seen rolling out of Starbase, they're not even close. The new space age has begun, so here's what we just witnessed. SpaceX didn't just upgrade a heat shield, they rewrote the rules of what's possible in space. While NASA spends weeks maintaining Dream Chaser, SpaceX turns around Starship in hours. While competitors design for Earth orbit, SpaceX builds for Mars colonies. But here's the deeper question. If SpaceX can revolutionize something as basic as gap fillers, what else are they working on that we haven't seen yet? Think about it. This is just the heat shield. What about their engines, their life support systems, their Mars landing technology? The space race just became a space sprint and SpaceX is already at the finish line. But I want to hear from you. Do you think traditional aerospace companies like Boeing and Lockheed can catch up? Or is SpaceX about to leave everyone else in the dust? Drop your thoughts below. And if you want to see what other impossible breakthroughs SpaceX is hiding, we've got some serious revelations coming up. The future of space isn't coming, it's already here. SpaceX just shocked NASA with their Raptor 4 engine, 330 tons of thrust. That's triple the power of Saturn V's legendary F1 engine. Here's what's crazy. This level of performance was supposed to be impossible. The chamber pressure is so high, it should melt the engine parts. But SpaceX found a way. And timing matters. While NASA struggles with Artemis delays, Elon quietly built the most powerful rocket engine in history. Why now? What's the real plan behind this monster? The answer changes everything we know about Mars missions. Let's dive right in. The numbers that shock the world. So what exactly makes this Raptor 4 so devastating? 330 tons of thrust. That's not just impressive, that's physics breaking. Picture this. The Saturn V's F-1 engine, the legendary beast that carried Apollo to the moon, produced 110 tons of thrust. Engineers called it a masterpiece, the pinnacle of rocket science. SpaceX just tripled it. But here's what makes your blood run cold. Elon Musk dropped this bombshell almost casually during a random interview with Everyday Astronaut. No fanfare, no press conference, just, oh, by the way, we hit 330 tons. Why the silence? What are they hiding? The progression tells a terrifying story. Raptor 1, 185 tons. Raptor 2, 230 tons. Raptor 3, 280 tons. Each jump seemed impossible. Each breakthrough defied conventional wisdom. Now Raptor 4, 330 tons. That's a 43% increase over Raptor 2 in just two generations. This is an evolution. This is revolution. The weight paradox that defies logic. Here's where it gets absolutely insane. While thrust exploded, weight plummeted. Raptor V1 weighed 2,000 kilograms, a metal monster. Raptor V2 dropped to 1,600 kilograms. Engineers thought that was the limit. They were wrong. Raptor 4, just 1,500 kilograms. Lighter than a compact car, yet powerful enough to launch skyscrapers into orbit. The thrust-to-weight ratio, 220 to 1. Compare that to the legendary Merlin 1D at 180 to 1. SpaceX didn't just improve the engine, they rewrote the laws of physics. But there's a problem, a massive, terrifying problem that should have killed this project before it started. The death trap that shouldn't work. Every rocket engineer knows the cardinal rule. More power equals more heat. More heat equals melted metal. Melted metal equals catastrophic explosion. Raptor 4's chamber pressure, 350 bar. That's 350 times atmospheric pressure. Inside that combustion chamber, temperatures reach 3,000 degrees Celsius. Hot enough to melt copper instantly hot enough to vaporize steel. The engine should literally destroy itself within seconds. Yet somehow, it doesn't. NASA spent decades trying to solve this exact problem. They threw billions at it. The best minds in aerospace engineering declared it impossible. You can't have that much power in that small a package, they said. The physics won't allow it. 
SpaceX proved them wrong. How? The answer lies in three breakthrough technologies that SpaceX guards like state secrets. Custom alloys that withstand impossible temperatures, cooling systems that cycle liquid methane through microscopic channels at lightning speed, manufacturing techniques that create components with zero weak points. But why push this far? Why risk everything for 330 tons when 280 tons already dominated the competition? The answer will shock you. The death trap that shouldn't work. Every rocket engineer knows the cardinal rule. More power equals more heat. More heat equals melted metal. Melted metal equals catastrophic explosion. Raptor 4's chamber